everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today we are talking about media room ideas that consider all aspects of family. Whether it's a dedicated room to enjoy movie nights, host family game nights, or simply a family room where the TV takes a center stage, I want to offer you my top media room ideas to make the most of family time. Let's start with the most important aspect of a media room, TV placement and the optimal viewing height. If you remember from one of my previous videos, top common design mistakes, one of my biggest pet peeves is placing a television on top of your fireplace. Now, why is this a pet peeve of mine? Well, for starters, that TV placement is way too high for it to be ergonomically comfortable for you to view the TV. I had previously stated in that video that 65 inches above the finished floor, 65 inches AFF, is the correct mounting height to place your television. But of course, it is very conditional. For example, my ranch style home only has seven foot ceilings at the lowest portion. We have vaulted ceilings, exposed beams, so it's seven foot at the lowest point, which means that wall is only seven feet high. My sweet spot to place all of my TVs is actually between 50 to 55 inches AFF. So always consider the height of your walls in relation to where you're placing the television. For about eight foot walls, you wanna go about five inches higher between 55 and 60 inches AFF, nine feet to 10 feet, which is a majority of my clients. That is where I usually hang it at 65 inches AFF. Of course, you also wanna consider how far away your seating group is, the height of your ceiling, how large your TV is. So although it is very conditional, I would always start around that 50 inch sweet spot and go from there. Let's move on to the TV height. Here are some examples of when the TV is hung too far above the fireplace. You can see from these examples that the TV is hung way too high above the mantel. This causes your neck to strain, it's way too close to watch comfortably, and you can see that some of these seats don't even have an optimum vantage point. I can only assume that the TV is not a predominant feature in some of these cases, especially in great rooms where there are multiple seating groups and you want to watch from either the dining room or the adjacent kitchen. That is probably the only time I can get behind a TV mounted above a standard fireplace. Now that you've seen examples of TVs hung too high, Let's talk about can you place a TV too low? Absolutely. And here's a prime example. Seated at the sectional, you can tell that the person viewing the TV has a low angle vantage point if they're sitting upright. So their necks would be straining down to view the TV, which is just as bad as it's straining up. You want the view to be slightly at an angle up, around 20 degrees angle, give or take, for the optimal viewing height. Here are some examples of TVs mounted and placed at the perfect viewing angle for the media room.
My best advice is if you're not too sure about where to mount that television, is to place the television directly above a console that's about 30 to 36 inches high. That's usually the perfect height to mount the TV or to place it on a stand in a majority of rooms. If you're not using a TV stand, give the bottom of the TV some breathing room and don't crowd the console. Four to six inches is the perfect negative space from the bottom of the television to the top of the console. Let's talk about seating. Typically in a media room, you'll have one main seating group. It's usually a large sectional or a sofa that's facing the television. But how do you make the most of family time when it's just a couple of family members viewing the television? You do it by creating a seating group. It could be a row of ottomans that you flank in front of the television. It could be a single lounge chair angled at a corner facing a sectional. It could also be symmetrical accent chairs placed in front of the television facing the main sofa. Now why would you do this? Because you want to create a conversational seating group. If the television is not in use, this is a perfect way for family members to interact with each other. I actually love little square ottomans for this purpose. They provide additional seating. They don't block the television or the fireplace. They don't take up too much room and they can be moved around depending on how many people you're hosting or what the function is for that evening. A good rule of thumb is to always make sure that you create conversational seating groups so every family member feels involved and part of the fun. Let's talk about focal points. If your TV is a focal point of the room, meaning the predominant function of that room is to mainly watch television, make sure the seating, whether it's a sectional or a large sofa, is deep and loungy. This will allow you to chill hard and spend hours binge watching your favorite shows with the family. Always have plenty of surface space, like a coffee table or a side table to set drinks on, put your phone down, or in some cases, even have full on meals. Consider your lifestyle and furnish accordingly. Now, if your TV is not a focal point of the room, focus on the conversational seating area and don't place the main seating group facing the television. I usually like to flank the heaviest piece of furniture, in this case, the largest sofa, against the wall and float accent chairs in space to create the seating group. This helps open up the room and allows you to look at a pair of beautiful chairs upon landing into the room versus the back of a huge sofa that will block the space. Clearly, TVs are this giant black box that can't be ignored in most cases. But what if you want to make it more discreet or hide it completely? 
You can do this with clever cabinets and custom solutions. Or make it easier and simply conceal the black box by specifying a finish that is equally just as black or dark to help make it disappear almost completely. This will allow you to focus more on the furniture and finishes in the space and make it less about the TV. Built-in cabinetry is a great way to add more functionality to your media room by creating a ton of storage space. It's a perfect place to store board games, throw blankets, and even hide all that tech equipment and cables. You can opt for complete floor-to-ceiling cabinetry or keep it minimal with a simple row of base cabinets. Think about your needs first and your style second and design accordingly. While I love a mix of open shelving and closed cabinets, my best advice is that you can never have too much concealed storage space. It always looks tidy. If you're blessed with one large open space to create a media room, be smart about your space planning and create multiple seating groups for different family members. A space to watch TV front and center and an adjacent space for conversations, lounging, cocktails, or whatever your needs desire. This is the perfect solution when your home hosts young toddlers and teenagers who might not want to hang together, but you still want to see everyone in one room. This is also a great way for the adults to hang in one area while still having eyes on their kids in the other. The days are getting shorter, the nights are getting longer, and I'm really excited to curl up on a comfy sectional with my family. Whether I like to admit it or not, the TV is actually a huge part of our home and lifestyle. I actually have a television in pretty much every single room in the home, even in the bedroom where feng shui says that TVs are an absolute no-no. But it's really important to clue into your lifestyle and make those concessions accordingly. When the TV is part of your family's lifestyle, it's best to make the necessary design inclusions for it and make it a cool feature of your home. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know if you have any cool ways to make media rooms a feature of your home. How have you cozied up the media room for your family? I'm sure the viewers would love to get some additional tips to add to this video. Share this video with anyone you know who is creating the ultimate media room and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.